Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a very special half-hour retrospective on our second season of the Gameplays edition of Miitopia. My name is Mark Joseph, also known as the Wii Nintendo Game Boy, and coming up at 8.30, 7.30 Central is the season finale of Season 2. Since I didn't do a recap of Season 1, let me take a few moments to do a quick overview. So for Season 1, there were 27 episodes, including the pilot, Two episodes were shown every Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. My character, Mark Joe, was a warrior. And his partners were Yaya the Mage, Bust the Chef, and Chan Chan the Cleric. Of those three, Bust was the only person not based off of a real person. Yaya is my real-life cousin, and Chan Chan is a family friend. We started off our adventure in Greenhorn. And major storylines include the introduction of the Dark Lord, our first interaction with the Royal Court, and dilemmas within the Royal Court, finally ending with the kidnapping of Mark Joe's first three partners in Episode 27. So now here we are at Season 2. Season 2 covers Episodes 28 through 37. The new ensemble assisting Mark Joe consists of real-life friends Elysia, Dawn, and Kristen. But, to begin off the second season, we begin with Mark Joe being alone after his first three partners are kidnapped. And not only that, but his title as a warrior was also stripped, so Mark Joe became a scientist. The Land of Next Door, which is a play on the words Next Door, is a contrast to the lush green land of Greenhorn. It is a desert area with a pyramid, an underground maze, and a very Middle Eastern looking town. Prominent enemies include scorpions, both scary and scaredy, cacti, stack, and murals, as well as enemies that were seen in Greenhorn as well. The first new partner for Mark Joe is Elysia, who is an imp. And also during that episode, the first episode of the second season, episode 28, Mark Joe encounters the great sage Brandy, who seems to be looking for a magically mysterious lamp. He warns Mark Joe not to rub it. After the brief encounter, Mark Joe welcomes his new partner, Dawn, the pop star. Meanwhile, Prince Eli of the royal court is the one that stumbles across the missing lamp that Brandy was referring to and rubs it to reveal this mischievously muscular genie named Zack who gives a false promise of granting a wish to Eli if he was freed. We find out through this dialogue exchange that it was the great sage Brandy who sealed the genie Zack. Mark Joe arrives shortly after Zack escapes and receives the lamp from Eli. In episode 30, Mark Joe finally arrives at the next door town, featuring Nicole, who is a dancing guide, a worried explorer named Eddie, a shady merchant family comprised of a father and daughter, played by Andre and Granny Hyde, respectively. A prickly couple, played by Ruth and Dominic. A rambling old man, played by Robbie. And a desert celebrity named Kayla. All eight of these supporting characters are from my Tamadachi Life Island. And of those eight, Eddie is the only one based off of a real person. So upon arriving in the town... Mark Joe accepts a challenge from desert celebrity Kayla, whose gold was stolen by the genie, Zack. Kayla tells us that the gold is located in an underground maze, which can only be accessed by going through the wetlands of the desert. During the journey through the wetland way, the final member of Mark's new trio of partners arrive. Her name is Kristen, and she is a thief. So we get a formidable group consisting of a scientist, imp, pop star, and thief well-balanced, and caters to different strengths and outcomes. Anyway, as Mark, Joe, and company continued to make their way through the wetland way, Mark, Joe encounters the great sage Brandy once again, who tells him that the genie has run amok. Brandy then spots Mark, Joe holding the lamp that he was looking for in episode 28. He instructs him on how to bring the genie back into the lamp, which is simply to recite the name of the genie repeatedly. Upon arriving at the underground maze, we see that it is very cavernous and features enemies such as the goblin, red goblin, fossils, and cobras. Multiple points on the map have more than one split on the path. 
During the trek through the underground maze, we see plenty of funny stuff happen, including Elysia drinking sand and falling into a hole all in episode 32. At the end of that episode, the party battles a fierce minotaur, which is guarding a door that leads to the area where Genie Zack hid all the gold. The following episode sees Mark Joe confronting the Genie Zack, who initially doubted him about knowing the incantation. During this section, the player has to type the name of the genie in order to properly trigger the next scene, which is seeing the genie getting sucked back into the lamp. Throughout this section, you have the option of stopping the incantation or keep the cycle going. Now, you don't actually see the genie getting sucked back into the lamp. The text of the genie begging you to stop will continue to recycle, but once you stop, Zack will learn his lesson and give back the treasure to the desert celebrity. Just when the plot started turning brighter, darkness falls on the next door town as the Dark Lord invades it and steals a bunch of the townspeople's faces, much like in Greenhorn. Upon arriving back at the next door town, we see it's much darker, more depressing, and gloomy. The dancing guide Nicole, Dominic, husband of Ruth of the Prickly Couple, Andre and Granny Hyde of the Shady Merchant Family, Zack the Genie, and desert celebrity Kayla all get their faces stolen. Nicole's face, along with Andre and Granny Hyde, and Zack, all fly into the pyramid. Dominic's face flies into another portion of the desert, but very close to the pyramid, and Kayla's face flies back into the underground maze. I first went back to the underground maze to rescue Kayla's face just so that we can complete that portion of the next door desert. New paths opened up that weren't available previously and we rescued Kayla's face, which happened to be on a painting of a mountain. Rescuing her face would award the party with 2,000 gold and a next door jewel that will be used later on in the pyramid. Back on the west side of the desert, again, new paths and points on the map have appeared and this time it leads up to the pyramid. Prior to entering, we battled Dominic, whose face was on a giant cobra. This battle was a lot easier than Kayla's, and we defeated that creature in a hurry. We get another next-door jewel for bringing his face back. Upon entering the pyramid, we see that it's very spacious, big enough that the design of the map screen makes it look like it's a cave with a bottomless pit. Anyway, a golem blocks the first location on the map, which the party soundly defeats. Common enemies that are found in this place are mummies and cobras. Now, a pyramid in an adventure game like this is not complete without having those Indiana Jones type of gimmicks. In a couple instances throughout episode 35, Dawn found herself flipping switches that either opened up hidden paths or released a boulder that nearly crushed her. Throughout the season, I never thought that anyone in the party was going to quarrel with each other. Turns out I was wrong, as during the trek to find the remaining faces, Kristen and Alicia get into an argument and cause resentment with each other. Not good, especially considering that the next battle happened to be the dancing guy Nicole's face, which was put on another painting but this time on the Mona Lisa. Fortunately, not long into the battle, pop star Dawn was there to the rescue. Dawn had leveled up enough to have the ability to perform Love and Peace, which will remedy any quarrel that is happening within the party. This made defeating this enemy much better, and as a result of defeating Nicole, we received a third next-door jewel. Deeper into the pyramid, we face up against the shady merchant family, Andre and Granny Hyde. And folks, if you want to know briefly why she's called Granny Hyde, her full name is Granalda Hyde, which is a pun of the chemical formaldehyde. Anyway, you battle two monsters, a sword and shield. Once you kill one, it stays dead until you kill the other, fortunately. You go back to the town, you get the fourth next door jewel. You head back to the pyramid to a door that can only be opened when you possess all four jewels. 
Once through, the party encounters Dark Lord Pat Salas in his only on-screen appearance of Season 2. He possesses the last face, which happens to be the genie Zack, and puts it on a pharaoh's head, setting us up for the climactic battle in the pyramid. Pharaoh Zack's signature attack is putting a party member under a curse in which they have been brainwashed into thinking they are pharaoh. It's not an incredibly hard battle, but it's a long one, and it got annoying, especially whenever the pharaoh puts someone in the party in a curse. <laughs> but once you defeat it, congratulations. Harmony has been restored in the next door desert. Once our adventurers return to the next door town, everything is back to bright, and Genie Zack experiences a change of heart. Time for us to head east, continuing to pursue the Dark Lord. In one of the pathways, a boulder blocks our progress. Fortunately, Zack, the renewed genie with his super-sized lungs, was able to blow the boulders away, allowing us to continue eastward. And that's where I leave you, folks. Episode 37 is not going to be that long, but a lot happens in that episode. So stay tuned to see what's in store for Mark Joe, Alicia, Don, and Kristen.
Okay, folks, so maybe a 30-minute recap episode seems a little too much for this type of video. And honestly, this video ended up turning out much more differently than what I originally wanted to. Folks, the problem is that while I'm no longer in college, Alicia, Dawn, and Kristen still are, and so it was next to impossible to try and get them involved in this season despite me saying in numerous episodes my eagerness to have them lend their voices for their me characters. I was also intending to have them be part of this uh, retrospective and react to some of the funny moments and have their input on what they thought of their characters and see if they can relate. Sadly, this is a day and age where everyone has their own thing to do and legitimately don't have any time to hang out and I have to respect that. So, um, throughout the season, I try to space out the recording so that everything lines up maybe around the time that college goes on a break, whether it's Thanksgiving or a three-day weekend. Um, I wanted to still have a lot of game to film before the three get kidnapped by the Dark Lord. However, if I disrupted the rhythm in which I was playing the game and commentating, I won't be motivated as much to play since I would find something new to focus on. And that's exactly what happened with... Uh, with Mario and Luigi Paper Jam, where I reached towards the end of the game, but college piled up so much that I stopped playing the game, and eventually it was it kind of became an afterthought. Um, so, unfortunately, I did complete filming the season uh, before Elysia and Don and Kristen got out of college uh, for that semester. Still, though, I want to thank them for being generous to allow me to use their me characters for major starring roles in this season of Metopia. But overall, I really liked this season, and I had so much fun filming this, and the fact that the pace of this story is just about right makes commentating the game and playing the game much more enjoyable. It gets me ready to film the next episode, knowing that there's a lot of exciting things coming ahead. And I just recently finished filming all of Season 3's episodes, right even before the season finale of Season 2, so I can't wait to present those episodes later on this year. So, a shorter retrospective than I thought, but maybe it's for the better. Thanks for watching, and coming up shortly, Season 2 finale of the Gameplays Edition of Metopia.